We are live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I am Fred Lambert, your host, and as usual, I'm joined by Seth Wintrow. How are you doing today, Seth? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep it at that. <laughs> All right. Um, a lot to talk about this week. We're going to start with some Tesla news as we usually do, and then we're going to jump into a few, uh, well, one on the link of a new car, and then we get two 2024-2025 uh, model of year update uh, with some interesting stuff to talk about. But first, something that happened last weekend, right after the last podcast episode, Elon announced an unveiling date for the RoboTaxi. So this is the actual dedicated build from the ground up new Tesla vehicle for self-driving. Rumored not to launch, not rumored, I think pretty much confirmed by Elon that it's not going to have a steering wheel. It's going to be a robo taxi. The image that you're seeing right now, if you're watching on YouTube or, or wherever, um, is that image that was released in the uh, authorized uh, biography of Elon by uh, Isaac Wal uh, Walter Isaacson. And we, it, it was marked as the early prototype there. So I don't, I don't, we don't know exactly how much of this is going to be in the actual vehicle. But it was interesting that that was an early prototype because you have like the rear wheel being covered. Um, some people are suspecting maybe a three wheeler, but I doubt that. I'm thinking more four wheel with wheel cover. Um, but that was again an early prototype. So Elon announced this weekend that the unveiling is going to take place August 8th. And what was interesting about that is like he, he announced that that day right after the Rotors report came out uh, saying that uh, Tesla scrapped their Model 2 or the cheaper. $25,000 Tesla model. We don't know the, the name. The name Model 2 has been thrown around uh, in favor of the RoboTaxi. And then Elon denied the report. But now the more we, with this information coming out and what I'm hearing in the uh, from back channels, it does sound that the Reuters report, the Reuters report was uh, at least based on some truth where maybe Elon denied the report just because it says scrap because it's scrapped the multi it's not it maybe it's not scrapped maybe it's still in the plans it's just that but effectively it's been scrapped because all the resources have been put toward the robo taxi that's what i'm hearing that's what probably was based on uh, the, the routers report was based on so and now elon announced a somewhat early unveiling of the robo taxi because previously it's he said uh, that uh, the next generation Tesla vehicle, which has been the Robo Taxi and the some so-called Model Two, towards the end of the year. Now, don't know about you, but for me, like August, early August is is not really end of the year. Uh, so yeah, it sounds like Robo Taxi plans have been sped up. Model Two plans slow down. I think that's a safe uh, assumption. Now, a lot of people are thinking, okay. Why is that happening is probably um, Tesla being a little bit more confident into its RoboTaxi plan because of FSD V12 and the progress on that front. Now I'm happy to say that I just received a V12 uh, late last week. And well, I, I think I said on the podcast, I just haven't tried it yet, but I was able to try it this weekend and a little bit this week. I haven't put a video together on it, but that we're working on that. I, I filmed a few things. I'm impressed. Hey, um, I was going to say the same thing. I okay, actually tried well, it. Last week, you tried it a little bit that you weren't too yeah. ex impressed, but you didn't try it much. You, you, well, you got I, to I try tried, it a little bit more? I tried 12 and I got 12.3 or uh, I got the, I had like the, you know, the 12, but then I got the upgrade, the 12.3. So 12.3 is probably the first one you got. And then 12.3.4, I just got it today. I just downloaded it on my car okay. just now. So you probably got that too. Right. The, the upgrade, the first version of 12 that I got uh, wasn't amazing. But the mm -hmm. second upgrade I got of that was much better. Nice. Uh, it, was, it was actually like significantly better than uh any other one that i've used yeah yeah no, I, i've been impressed too like i got from not only from like uh, I, I even got confident enough to start it from my garage here which is like not like next to the road like you have to navigate my completely dirt uh road driveway situation all the way to the road and get 
on the road and then you have some uh, highway some some um, country roads and then some city street to get all the way to the grocery store and i got all the way to the grocery store with zero intervention only thing i did was i had to press the accelerator at one point uh at a four-way stop because the car arrived at the exact same time as i did and uh and sometimes like it's just a little bit too careful on that it wants to be like too nice and let the other car go but you cannot do that in canada because people are already nice here so like if you get too nice and no one is moving it's like oh go ahead go ahead no no you go ahead now you go ahead so you have to press the accelerator at one point to get it going but no i i, I was really impressed I, I need a probably a little bit more testing obviously but it does like i've had fsd beta for two years now in my car and I've never seen like a significant progress in two years. Like this feel for the first time, like significant progress. I'm not saying that I'm all in now on full self-driving or anything like that, but at least I am, I, it, it increased my level of the, the like I, I put, let's say like a 10% chance before of the, the uh, all the ingredient being there like the, there's there's this idea right now that since uh, since now we have end-to-end -end neural net in the car it's all ai um potential for faster improvement plus no according to elon no compute training constraint anymore tesla invested 10 billion dollars in nvidia computers they have the training uh capacity now to feed it with crazy amount of video and improve it so you combine those two things together and you have technically a recipe for like extremely fast improvement and if i was at a 10 percent chance of that actually happening before now with actually trying v12 and seeing how smooth it is and there's still there's still some issue with it though um i see maybe like a 30 percent chance of that happening like where we see crazy fast improvement now over the next few months which could explain why elon is planning the august unveiling of the robot taxi again this is an actual car that tesla is planning to unveil there that is built for self-driving but the idea is that it's going to have a very similar hardware suite as what we have in the cars right now so that they can just transfer the software to it and well, not exactly as easy as that obviously but it, it, keep it as close as possible so that there's not too many things to change and having it obviously optimized for self-driving rather than human driving but elon is probably uh, how many months is that so we in april already so may june july so it's four months about four months to get there less than four months to get there um i my understanding is that elon is confident enough that within those four months there's enough improvement in v12 that it builds overall confidence in Tesla's um, potential for achieving self-driving. I'm not saying it's going to achieve self-driving in four months, but we see enough improvement in four months that we see now a clear path toward Tesla achieving self-driving, giving credibility in Tesla's robotaxi. Because otherwise, Tesla has a robotaxi and they don't have a functioning or a path to a functioning self-driving, and it's, it's a very mute point, right? Do you get... Just a little bit excited about the uh, robo taxi unveiling. Oh, you're muted, Sid. It'll be interesting. Uh, my my, uh, you know, the Cybertruck event was so like poorly planned. I mean, I'm sure it was planned well, but like clearly Elon had not done any. You know, it seemed like this was the it first rushed a little bit, a little bit rushed. Yeah, first take. So. I'm certainly interested about the information that comes out uh, and but I'm not like the way it was presented was cringy and I, I kind of don't want to see I don't want to cringe. So, yes, I'm excited about uh, information and what's new. I'm not excited about watching it. <laughs> but what when I, when I, I'm excited about is like, OK, I, I just discussed the self-driving part of it, but it's also going to be the first vehicle on the new platform. So I guess we're going to get some more information on that new platform, some more information on that unbox uh, manufacturing technique. So these two things uh, will also give us some information about the upcoming like Model 2, $25,000 Tesla, however you want to call it. All right, uh, Tesla launched a new version of the Model Y in Europe. So it's a rear-wheel drive, long-range Model Y. Something that has been available in some other markets before, but now Tesla has launched it in not every European market, but most of them. You can see the list uh, 
here on the screen and you can go to on an electric to to go check it out but uh 600 kilometers 273 miles of range on the wltp standard uh, so it's now the new longest range model y and it's starting at um 49,000 euros, 4,000 euros more than the rear-wheel drive standard range, or Tesla is like not using the term standard range for it anymore, though. So now, now you have like four models in the Model Y lineup in Europe. I think it's a good addition. I think it's like, especially in Europe, I think this, I don't know how popular all-wheel drive is compared to uh, just um, rear-wheel drive or front-wheel drive. I would assume by percentage less so than in North America said, would you, do, would you agree with that? Well, I, um, I don't know. Uh, the, yeah. so, I mean, what, what do you think your pack sizes are on the, these things? What the, what the, what the battery pack sizes? Oh, I, I mean, it's going to be the same one as the, the, the bigger one. So it's, uh, going to be, uh, uh, over 60, around 70, I think. Yeah, it's always hard for me to like make the yeah. transition between kil kilometers and miles. Yeah, uh, I know you're better with that since you're. Yeah. Uh, it's 273 yeah. miles of range on WLTP, so it's like 320, 330 on the uh, EPA. Okay. I mean, so yeah. I think a lot of people do like the range more than the all-wheel drive, so it makes sense to have that option in your lineup. I think. Yeah, I mean, it depends also on the weather around you. You know. Yeah. No, for of course for like. Uh, colder climates, but uh, Norway, Sweden, so the, the Scandinavian countries are um, on that lineup. Yeah. Oh, do we have breaking news from Paul here? Tesla so just reduced full self driving monthly subscription to $99. That's crazy. That's uh, half price, literally. Yeah. I mean, it makes a little bit sense because it was two hundred when it was a fifteen thousand dollar package, and Tesla didn't reduce it. I think when it reduced the price to twelve thousand, but at the same time, Tesla said that the price of the full self driving package would keep going up all the time, and that was part of the appreciating asset theory that, oh, of oh, course, geez. has been completely proven wrong since. But um, interesting move. So obviously, I think with V twelve, a lot more attention on the full self driving, a lot more positive attention at least on full self driving. So maybe it makes sense to try to capture more of that. And Tesla could always increase the price because it's the monthly subscription. It's not the package price. But let me let me confirm that. So, so I'm not calling you a liar, Paul, but just want to make sure real quick here. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the design studio, but I won't, I won't even see that on the design studio. Do, do you have a car on your... Uh, on your test, do you have a Tesla car that doesn't have full self-driving, sir? No, all of mine are FSD. No, I you mean, sold your all, all of mine. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you, you need to check in the app, uh, I guess. Uh, I guess there's a support page. This uh, FSD subscription support page. Yes, right here. Yeah, it was yeah, reduced. $99 per month. Hmm. Okay. But moving so that's, on. That's yeah. uh, 1200 a year. Yeah. So it would take you 10 years to reach the $12,000 yeah. price. So that's kind of insane. Like you would. It makes a lot more sense. Like nobody, makes... nobody would buy the full. You know, why not just buy yeah. the subscription? I think everybody's going to buy a subscription if it's that. Yeah. Price. Though I'm looking at it right now and it says whether you go, you know, so that's pretty crazy. So whether you go from basic autopilot to enhanced autopilot, it costs you a hundred dollars a month. Cause that because that's the thing, then then yeah, I wouldn't buy any of the package and go with 99. Because because well, like I was thinking, so there's the, the the city street driving i don't care about it that much like it doesn't it doesn't like improve my experience and hence the pilot with uh like navigating autopilot and uh uh lane changing on highway and all that that's really useful to me so i was thinking maybe i could have that and not not uh just pay for full self-driving when i want to but at the same time that like, now i'm gonna have to pay six thousand dollars and nine nine a month when i need to so right 
yeah, like Carl in San Diego says, it's not a lifetime guarantee. Yeah, for sure, Tesla could increase that any time. But as of right now, it would make more sense uh, to to buy that than to buy the package. But of course, if Tesla does achieve for self driving, they're most likely going to increase that. Right. Most definitely going to increase that. So then, then maybe you have paid for a year, twelve hundred dollars. And then they increase it back to two hundred dollars, or maybe you know, even three hundred dollars a month. And then you're like, "Oh, okay, maybe, uh, maybe I should buy the package." All right, moving on to the Cybertruck. Uh, Tesla's Drew Baglino, the head of energy and uh, powertrain engineering, confirmed this week that uh, Tesla is going to release an over-the-air software upgrade that's going to increase the charging curve to one hundred and forty-four uh, miles in fifteen minutes. Currently, it stands at 128 miles added in 50 minutes times. So that's a 20% increase in charging capacity, uh, fast charging capacity. So the charging curve has been one of the biggest critics, uh, critical point of the of the cyber truck where um, people felt like it's it's not on par with Tesla's capacity, especially for that big of a battery pack. We thought it could do more, and sure enough. Uh, it can, it's just Tesla is limiting it. So this is something that we, Tesla has been criticized on in the past, while well, both criticized and also applauded, like depending on your point of view, is that they they don't do as much testing as legacy automakers. Like they, uh, they, will, they, 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 do, they do a lot, just not as much. And sometimes it feels like they, uh, they just limit uh, on software-wise the vehicle as they release it to the customers in order to not go to the breaking point. And then as they feel more confident as their own internal testing continues, because Tesla is continuously internal testing the server truck, even though it's already in the hands of customers, and at the same time using feedback from customers and data from the fleet, then they build more confidence in some of the things like the powertrains, uh, the charging capacity and all that and then release some of the capacity over time. So it looks like it, this is what's happening here. Um, but but it's good news, at least for like existing owner. It's not something that you will have to like go to the shop for. It's not something that you need know, a hardware upgrade. It's something that needs just an over the air and you get 25, 20% faster charging time, uh, which is remarkable. I know that the out of specs did like a pickup truck um, a cannonball run uh, recently we, we, comparing a bunch of uh, of trucks and that was like the biggest downside of the cyber truck like it, it was charging pretty good compared to other trucks too but not not as uh, as fast as it, it, it was expected to so that would not make a big difference maker making the cyber truck uh, faster was it charging at electrify america or was it charging on a tesla uh Charger, do you well, they that? had a lot of problem with that because they also had the Silverado, and the Silverado was bricked, I think, at uh, an Electrify America station or a charge point station. I don't remember which one. So they, they saw, had some issues with charging with that. I saw a video where the Cybertruck was charging much faster at an Electrify America than it could charge at a um, a Tesla supercharger. So I wonder if they're yeah, just... it has been seen charging, I think, at 320 kilowatts on a third party station. So it is it is capable of more. It's just but it peaked really fast and then went down. So the charging curve is still the more important thing. Okay, we're also learning more about the Cybertruck battery pack thanks to a teardown by Monroe Engineering. Uh, they they are currently doing a teardown of the Cybertruck and they are down to the battery pack now. And this week they they revealed this video uh, and a few comments that got a lot of speculation going where they they called the battery pack of the Cybertruck. Um, they called it half empty or half full, depending on who you're talking to. Um, That's so, all different. I don't know. Um, at first glance, when you look at it right now, it does look pretty much half full indeed. Uh, but I, I wasn't sold on it based on that video. The only thing that got me going is after that video came out and a lot of speculation came out, you had the... Um, Tesla's uh, the Cybertruck lead engineer Wes Morrow uh, that confirmed it by saying instead of he said he prefers to think about it as half full rather than half empty, but it still means the same thing. It still it sounded like a confirmation. Okay, it is indeed half empty, half full, whatever you want to call it. 
So then it's like, why? Why is it half empty? Why is it half full? Well, we, we have today, we just got a lot more information from it because uh, Monroe released their full video of the um, of the teardown of the um, opening of the battery pack. And first of all, it's not it's not even close to half full or half empty. It's 30 millimeters um, more, so three centimeters, which is a lot. So it's a three centimeters of empty space over the battery pack. So it's not enough for another row of uh, another layer of cells. All of these, not not 4680 cells, because 80 is 80 millimeters. But still, there's room. So Monroe speculated that it's either uh, to vent gas from uh, uh, fr from the battery pack, which I would find surprising. There's other ways to vent gas that doesn't take that much space. Uh, and the other speculation is to re like a crush zone for like off-roading, since it's technically an off-roading vehicle. Uh, you can get some pressure on the battery pack, and then if it's uh, if it's significant pressure and something like a crash or something, it, it it leaves room to 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 crumble the batteries upwards rather than going into the cabin or whatever. I don't know if either of those are true. I just know that the half empty, half full thing is an exaggeration. I don't know why this is lead engineer on the cyber truck like contributed to it, but it's not like the it's not like the, the Hummer AV battery where they go double layer. But I mean, they probably could have done that, but that would uh, they couldn't not necessarily have done that with the same battery pack design. Does that mean? Because I heard a lot of probably heard the same thing said, but a lot of this speculation was around. Oh, that's probably why, like uh, Tesla, that that why is the the range is so short on the Cybertruck, or so short, or not as what was promised in the original unveiling. Tesla planned a second layer on the battery that would have enabled that range, but then they didn't do it because they felt like that would be too much battery to carry around all the time, when, even when you're not using it. So they, that's when they thought about the range extender that you put it when you need to. So I really don't know about all that. Sounds like this is a stretch. There's more like there's probably another reason for it instead, and it's it's just we're not seeing it quite yet. Yeah, one thing we talked about a little bit before the show, um, Rivian's new 46 series battery is the 4695, so it's mm -hmm. another one and a half centimeters taller. It, I wonder if Tesla is thinking about going to a, a taller battery pack or taller taller battery inside the the Cybertruck that that would fit inside that uh the case better i guess yeah that's exactly is it's uh i think so he said you said it's a 4695 i think you said right. the uh so yeah that, that that would still leave some room into uh into the pack with the 30 millimeters more so uh yeah that that's a real possibility here for like a future version i don't know if that's like this is just now starting to ramp up the 4680 i don't know if it going for a different format is really doable but it is interesting because I think I think uh, Rivian is not the only one too that uh, is moving to um, even bigger than 4680 format uh, recently. So I think I've heard from Chinese automakers too that they're 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 going from bigger formats. So yeah, not impossible. John, John Kishagis in the comments says, "What if they're planning a 46 110 battery? Yeah, that would be the you know 110 millimeters, 11 centimeters tall. That would be a big battery. Mm -hmm. Exactly." All right, Tesla, yesterday, uh, last night, they unveiled the sports seats. So these are the seats that we've seen around on prototypes in, in the app uh, that were linked to the new Model 3 performance. But they were unveiled this week as the Model S Plaid sports seats. So they are now the standard seats on the Model S Plaid. And uh, if you order the truck since uh, April 1st or uh, any uh, since then, you get these new seats. Uh, gonna get to, okay, here's a better look. So it's pretty much what we've seen before. You get the plaid uh, logo in the middle. You get uh, much deeper lateral support here at the base, on the sides, and even the address has like a, a little bit more support. Uh, Tesla mentions, oh, yes, increase that little support, I guess. So. Mod modular seat architecture for comfort and support, plus same 12 way power adjust eating and ventilation. So that hasn't changed. High performance suede uh, for increased grip and reduce weight. So they move to some suede. I think that's probably that on the side here because the middle is still perforated, like uh, um, 
perforated uh, full leather, I should say. No additional cost for it. You get it on the $90,000 Model S Plaid. I would assume that that's probably the same seat, but probably not with the Plaid logo in the, in the middle or going to come to the multi-performance whenever that thing gets unveiled. <laughs> Although we don't know if the, it's going to be called performance. It might be called Model 3 Plaid or Model 3 Ludicrous or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the, the badging on the one that we've seen last week was clearly Ludicrous badging. So maybe it's going to be called Model 3 Ludicrous Model or Model 3 Performance with Ludicrous package. I don't know. This, uh can do whatever it wants on that front. So when do we think that's going to come out? I thought we were, last time we were talking about that, sorry to jump subjects, but we thought it was like any hour now and then it, the whole week went by without it. I'm so confused about that. Like, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if they, like the, the event that they did, they, they did an embargo with the people uh, that were there, the few YouTubers that were there. Uh, it's it's a strange one. Like, it's wouldn't be the first time that this was an embargo, but that's a long one now. It's been a week already. Um, we've seen that car around. We've seen prototypes. It's a, it's the first time that we've seen Tesla launch a new car like that. It's it's brand new. Going from the Model Three to the Powerwall Three, uh, Tesla had a webinar this week for the um, the its third party installers uh, to get some uh, more information on the Powerwall Three. Uh, you can. We put a link to the webinar in the post here. Uh, but some of the more interesting details that came up, we already had a lot of information about the Power 3. The main thing is higher power output, uh, both continuous and peak power output. That's enable you basically to have a single power wall for most installation for the average house. But now we learn a little bit more about it. It's still the same. Uh, we, we hear a lot of your notifications set right now. I know. I'm trying to get them off, but yeah. it's really annoying. Sorry about that, everyone. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you um, you get you, you you some people still want more energy capacity. So now we have a better idea of how Tesla is going to approach that with the Powerwall three, uh, with what they call a DC expansion. So you can get an actual Powerwall three unit and what looks like a Powerwall three unit, but they call it DC expansion because it's not quite a Powerwall because it doesn't have the inverter included, all the power electronics included. It's more just of a like I said, DC expansion is the is the capacity of the energy capacity added to it. Uh, so right now with the Powerwall two or Powerwall two plus, they call it, you need to stack them together and uh, to to get uh, more energy capacity and power capacity because they all have a, I think it's seven kilowatt uh, of capacity instead of eleven point five on the new one. So now you have two options. What you can do is this on the left where you stack four Powerwall 3, for example, so you get 54 kilowatt hour of energy capacity uh, and 46 power capacity, 46 kilowatt. So that's a weird mix. Like, I don't know exactly how you would need that. Um, but the other thing you can do is have, well, in this case, four Powerwall 3 and 12 DC expansions. So you have the same power capacity because you have four Powerwall 3 and the DC expansion just had energy capacity. So you have 46 kilowatt and 216 kilowatt hour of energy capacity. So this is more for like a commercial project, obviously. But what you could do too is to have just one Powerwall 3 and three DC expansions. So you would have still 54 kilowatt hour of energy capacity and 11.1 .1 kilowatt uh, power capacity, which would be like very good for a small a small store, a house, a big house, or something like that. Uh, and yeah, and these DC expansion too are going to be cheaper, going to be $1,000 cheaper than the Powerwall 3, which starts at $9,000, 9300 before in incentive. Uh, so you get $1,000 cheaper on that because you don't have the power electronics that come with it. Uh, oh yeah, and they also confirmed that the Powerwall 3 is using the LFP chemistry now. So... All Tesla's energy storage products are using LFP chemistry, which is a little bit safer, uh, less energy dense, which is not too much of a problem with the stationary product, and um, offers longer and um, more cycles. Uh, yeah, more cycles, longer longevity. Also, not as much degradation if you charge it a hundred percent. So I keep my power wall at 80, 85 percent here. Mm -hmm. um, you could keep them a hundred percent and get more of that 13.5 kilowatt hour capacity. You know, what's something else interesting is uh, LFP batteries don't do as well in super cold weather. I wonder if these are like inside only type of things. 
you know, if, if you're up in, you know, Vermont or Canada and it gets down to like negative 20, uh, or, uh, whatever, uh, yeah. I wonder if these hold their capacity as much. Cause I know that in cars, uh, the, uh, LFP batteries don't do nearly as well in, in cold weather. Well, that, that's, you know, pros and cons. I heard some people say at the same time, like, okay, but I, at least uh, if I bring my power walls inside, that's that's better because uh, the LFP is safer. Some people are like feel better about bringing the LFP inside than they do with uh, the NMC and CA because uh, it, it is less prone to fire, even though the, the power wall, I, I don't think I've ever heard of a power wall fire, nope. to be honest with you. Nope. And there are hundreds of thousands of them out there. So... Um, obviously, they, they're not. There's not. They're not as roughed up as a vehicle battery pack. It's stationary, but you know, pros and cons. Yeah. All right. This this was a very interesting one right there earlier this week. Um, Tesla settled the lawsuit that we talked about uh, a few weeks ago when uh, it first came up. Well, it first came up. It's the, it's a lawsuit based on a tragic, uh, fatal accident dating back in 2018. So. It's not really recent, but if you remember, it's Walter Wang, an Apple engineer, who crashed his Model X on autopilot on the highway in California, where he was driving autopilot and the autopilot entered the median by mistake. So clearly an autopilot mistake. However, he was on his phone, not paying attention, didn't see uh, the barrier coming, crashed in it. Um, there was no crash accentuator uh, or attenuator because it was um, pulverized a few weeks before in another crash. So that also contributed to the force of the accident leading to un his unfortunate death. But the authorities investigated the accident. They determined that the driver, Walther, was at fault because he was on his phone. They also put some of the blame on the um, uh, crash attenuator not being there. And they also blame partly Tesla because the autopilot is the one that took the decision to go in the median. But again, Tesla recommends that not recommends ask people to keep attention to pay attention at all time, keep their hands on the steering wheel at all time to prevent those things. And apparently the driver had several seconds to adjust and he didn't do it because he was not paying attention. Now Tesla was brought to court over wrongful death um, cases in similar accident in the past and they won all of those cases. What we thought was interesting with this one is that the lawyers for the family benefited from those prior cases that Tesla won and adjusted their strategy around it. And they adjusted pretty well, I thought. I thought they were going to make things interesting at the trial. They focused on, they, they don't deny that he misused the pilot or anything like that, but they, they, they instead focused on two things. One, on the autopilot being defective and Tesla knowing it, meaning that Tesla knew that this was a problem. Autopilot goes into the median and they didn't do enough to prevent this issue, which I think is somewhat fair. Like we, we, we knew early in the autopilot days, 2016, 2020, like this was a somewhat recurring problem where autopilot would try to take exit that wasn't there and intermediate and all that. So maybe there's something there. The other thing that I thought was even more interesting was the aspect of, Tesla being responsible to a certain degree uh, for the misuse of autopilot through statement that it made, specifically Elon's statement, like over-promising about autopilot. And then you had, um, you had the fact that Tesla knew that it was going to be misused and they didn't address it. We, we discussed specifically the, the lawyers on cover, like a message that Tesla's then president, uh, uh, McNeil, John McNeil, sent to uh, Elon Musk and other people and the head of the pilot at the time, saying that he himself was like on his phone checking emails uh, while using autopilot uh, because it was too tempting. So, and Tesla also obviously didn't do a lot of driver monitoring at that time, which they have since increased, so that it gives gave even more power, more credibility to the theory that the lawyers had, where. Tesla didn't do enough back then because they were doing more now on the on monitoring. So they, there was, I'm no, I'm no lawyer, but there was, it looks like there's a, an argument to be made that Tesla had some mis made responsibility in the misuse of autopilot. Now, the, the case was about to go to trial. And what we learned this week is Tesla decided to settle the case. Um, we don't know about the term of the settlement. 
presumably it involves some cash for the family and no admission of wrongdoing from Tesla. This is standard in the industry. That's generally what happens with, with those cases. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, they have sold the case. Now, what makes this interesting is that even though there's no official admission of wrongdoing from Tesla, you could sort of take it as an admission of wrongdoing because what Elon has previously said, you know, Elon was talking about Tesla hiring a team of hardcore lawyers that would go after people that go after Tesla. And um, Elon at the time said, we, speaking of Tesla, will never surrender slash settle an unjust case against us, even if you will probably lose. So that's as clear as day. So if they settle this case, is that the, the case was just. <laughs> it's uh, literally what it would mean. Now, of course, you would, could say like, oh, Elon was uh, was not being serious about there. Like you, you you say Elon is lying all the time. What do you say Elon is not lying now? Well, there, <laughs> like that's literally what I got from people when I wrote that that post. It was it was crazy. It's crazy how the Tesla fans went from Tesla's gonna crush. Uh, Walter's family in that case because he was not paying attention or no to Tesla settling and then they're like oh of course that was the right move from Tesla not to to go after that family <laughs> it's uh it's a strange situation for sure but it's now settled probably because I think the lawyers had a nice approach and Tesla didn't want some kind of precedent being set with that either it's probably the the course of action that happened there all right, we're going to move on to some Tesla news. We have a few more news items that we want to discuss, and then we're going to jump into the comment section. So I know we already interacted with the comments a little bit. So if you have a specific question that you want to ask us, you can put them in the comment section right now. We'll get to it. It can be about subject we discussed today or any subject in the EV world that you want us to address. We're going to get to it in just a few minutes. But first, the EQS is getting a 2025 update that uh, is pretty significant. First of all, visual update, uh, the new grill, which I was not a fan of the previous grill on the EQS. And you get the classic uh, standing star rather than the giant one that was in the middle of the grill too. So this is more of a classic Mercedes look, uh, more of a... I didn't hate the old one, but I do like the new one a little better. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's classic Mercedes to yeah. have that. Though at the same time, it's because the EQS is a lot more aerodynamic than the, the average Mercedes, it does stand out a bit. Yeah. I guess I'm going to get used to it. But all right. So uh, I didn't look too much into the rest of the update. Okay. Let's look at a little bit more pictures, maybe, because they are. It's still a little bit glassy, a little bit plasticky in the front, though, that, uh, that grill. I'm not gonna lie to you. The EQS is not the best looking Mercedes ever ever built. Yeah, it's not uh, aesthetically on the outside. It's just yeah. very like it looks kind of like a Honda Accord or something. Exactly. Uh, but the inside is very nice. Very yeah, luxurious. it's luxurious. Yeah, like this, the back seat. I mean, is this is the Maybach version? When I was yeah. uh, listening to the Masters this week. They're sponsored by Mercedes. So I kept looking at, <laughs> I kept as I was writing today. I already had a Mercedes in my background all the time. So many commercials and those things. It's insane. All right, what else do we have new here? Um, the usable battery capacity has increased by about ten kilowatt hour to one hundred and eighteen kilowatt hour. So that's nice. Uh, 340 miles of range is going to be unable from that. That's uh, significant. Um, new regenerative braking software enable greater recovery. So that contributes to the longer range, I assume. And then a lot of interior updates. So optional pinnacle trim with executive interior package. So that's probably what we were looking at here. Uh, the executive seats. New backrest for the rear seat that can adjust up to 38 degrees. Rapid heating rear seats. Neck and shoulder heating for rear passengers. Jeez. Uh, pneumatic adjustment for reset depth. Okay. Illuminated trim accent, chrome accent, rear comfort pillows. An additional 0 0.2 inches of foam has been added to the so A lot about the rear seats here. Uh, making the rear seat more comfortable, which always has been something that Mercedes uh, has focused on. All right, then you also have the Ford Mustang Mach-E getting a late 
2024 model year update. So we're already talking about the EQS 2025 year update, but um, Mackie was a little bit behind on the on its um, update uh, model year this year. But it's a nice one. Uh, so a lot of uh, range improvement, a lot of efficiency and range improvement. You get um, 20 plus um, 20 additional miles for 250 on the standard range we will drive and extended range we will drive if you go with the all-wheel drive version you are stuck with uh, 10 percent more but uh, 10 no, not 10 percent not 10 more miles for 280 and then you have the mustang Mackey rally which is a new trim uh that get 265 because it's uh one uh, one additional inch of ground clearance for off-roading so that 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 will heat to your your mileage pretty quickly um yeah, other than the EPA rating, what do we get? Uh, we get faster charging. Now, 36.2 minutes, uh, 10 to 80%. So that's nice. I've always been saying that the Mackie, the, my main thing is the, the charging capacity that's a bit limited. So that's a nice little improvement there. You uh, basically shave eight minutes uh, with the extended range battery pack and 5.7 minutes uh, from the standard range battery pack off of your of a big uh charging session obviously at 10 to 80 percent uh you get a performance bond uh, with that so you you get an, a new performance upgrade that saves half a second off the gt 0 to 60 accelerations time now to 3.3 seconds so you got quite of a beast here and uh and again you so so that's with the performance upgrade on the mackey gt which is optional and then you have the Mackie Rally, which have the performance upgrade standard on it. Um, so, yeah, you have a new suspension on the, on the Rally that's tuned for on and off road, uh, an inch higher. Uh, we have a video of it on the on the website if you want to check it out. So now here's your new uh, your new lineup for the for the Mackie. So you have the select version, which is available in both standard range rear wheel drive, standard range all wheel drive or extended range all-wheel drive. Then you have the premium, which has the same option, plus standard range all-wheel drive also. No, you also had that. Well, what's the... Oh, no, yeah, the premium also has the extended range rear-wheel drive option. So um, the, then you have the GT with the optional performance upgrade. The GT is just all-wheel drive and extended range. And then again, same thing for the rally, for the rally. It's just that the performance package is also uh, standard. Uh, you also have the bronze package for the for 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 the GT, which is just aesthetic improvements. But yeah, I saw, so I saw yeah. the rally at the uh, New York Auto Show. It's a pretty sweet vehicle. Um, I think uh, I think that'll be a kind of a fun fun thing for people it's got those white white uh wheels and um it's got kind of like a rally package inside uh you know just a little bit more ground clearance better suspension so it can go off road reminds me a little bit of the uh Porsche cross turismo uh it's you know they didn't do much like it's not a off-road vehicle but it can go like you know gravel and dirt and whatever so it's nice that you have that option and it has most of the speed. I don't, I think they lost some significant range though with those times. Yeah, 265 instead of 280. Yeah. Well, it's not too bad. But yeah, it's not bad. Obviously, you're not buying a rally car if the efficiency and the range is your right. biggest concern. <laughs> All right. Uh, the pricing has increased a little bit with the 2024 version, but stick around for a little bit i'm sure you can find yeah. uh, some discounts they are they are all over the place when it comes to actually Ford. um maybe one of the reasons why they're kind of late on this 2024 uh version is that maybe they had inventory for the oh, good point. so they might have been just holding this back yeah that's a good point yeah you're probably right on that because speaking of four discounts uh, more discounts on the uh f-150 lightning or more price cuts official price cuts uh here's the new trim here so the base one the pro is still the same still at fifty five thousand uh, dollars but the xlt gets a two thousand dollar discount at sixty three thousand dollars now 
the flash gets a five thousand five hundred dollar discount so that's a, a big difference here so we always said the flash is like the most attractive trim uh, on the lineup and now it starts at just sixty eight thousand dollars so now now i think we have a winner here i think a lot of people are going to go for that because it's sixty eight thousand dollars that you pick up truck with 300 miles plus of range you know have a lot of those uh, then if you want a little bit more luxury out of it, you can go with the Lariat, but you're going to have to, it, it went $2,500 down, but it's still $77,000. So uh, that's why I say that the, the flash is like good value, 68000 versus $77,000. Yeah, um, I'd, still, I'd still grab the flash. That's, I mean, 67 and then you get the tax credit. Yeah, that's pretty good vehicle. With, if you, know, if you are eligible thousand. for it, of course, but yeah. And you know the the big range and the big battery. So you also have a huge battery in there, so you can mm -hmm. use that for other stuff like power. And you have some of the premium features too, like it's not full Lariat or Platinum, but you have some of them too. Uh, and then Platinum and Platinum Black stay the same price at eighty five and ninety three thousand dollars respectively. But yeah, Ford Lightning gets a little bit more, um, a little bit cheaper. Of course, I think probably with the Silverado uh, coming now, uh, it's slowly ramping up. And the Cybertruck also a little bit competition tighter. Ford is trying to compete here. All right, one more news item to discuss. The Alfa Romeo Milano, or at least Milano for now, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> as uh, has been unveiled this week. So why do I say for now is that apparently the Italian government is like mad at Alfa Romeo for calling the model Milano. Yeah, they, they have some rights to the name. I don't know. Like, I mean, so Milano is Milan in 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 Italian. I would assume. I think so. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Actually, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, can. If I start a car company, can I, I, I name my model like the Montreal? Like who's like no one owns that name? Like there's like a Colorado, a Chevy Colorado. Yeah. State. I don't know. It, it's a weird one. Anyway, let's focus on the car here. So it's the first entry for uh Alfa Romeo, the famed Italian car company. Uh, using the Stellantis ECMP platform, uh, which we're gonna first see in the Jeep Avengers. Uh, it's sporting a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack here, which is uh, not uh, on the bigger size for 250 miles of range. In the urban cycle, you can go up to 366 miles. Okay, that's I don't know I don't know why they mentioned that, but <laughs> uh, I guess they are thinking that some people are just going to use it on the on city street. Um. Yeah, it is uh, not super powerful with 156 horsepower in this. Um, what's That's the size? Of it? Size is uh, similar. Horsepower. Yeah, that 156. Is really, that is really low. Like that. Yeah, that's Italian power for you. Oh <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Lamborghini and Ferrari are Italian, so <laughs> I know. It's about the size of the X30. The X30. How much range you get out of the X30 for the base version? I think it's like 260 or something. Yeah. Um, some design accent here. I know I know the EX30 has way more power than that. Probably more. It's actually the fastest Volvo ever made, so <laughs> the quickest off the line. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, this is more like a Fiat 500 idea, you know, like yeah. really low power, really small, like... It has a hundred kilowatt charging. Yeah. Uh, well, what year is it? <laughs> no. What the hell? Yeah, they just hey, went low on the specs here. I I think it's like a Fiat five hundred, like very basic, basic thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the Jeep Avenger is the Jeep Avenger going to have those specs if it's on the same platform? Like it, it makes no sense. A hundred kilowatt charging in twenty twenty four. I mean, is this thing coming this year too? Is it is it available by the end of the year? I would assume so. Uh, order will open early this summer. Prices are expected to be closer to its launch. Yeah, of course. So not even pricing here. I mean, who the hell is going to buy that? Like, unless you have a hardcore like Alfa Romeo fan, but I've never. That's met weird. One. It's like Alfa Romeo is not a bargain brand. So why would they? Nope. Why would they kneecap this thing so badly? I don't know. Weird. I have no clue, but I won't be buying that one. Um. All right. Let's are move you... into the comments. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Turkey Neck, uh, before we even went on the show, asked, what is Tesla's motivation for the free month of FSD for all owners? To sell FSD packages. Right. So I know that a lot of like the Nisair and FSD beta, when, when Elon announced that, they were like, oh, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot with that because it's it's uh, they, like, they think it's so good, but it's actually not that good. And most people that try it. And uh, well, it's tough to have like good data on like how much people love FSD versus how much people hate FSD. Like it's the data is always going to be skewed. Um, in my own experience, it's about 50 50. Like some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, and a lot of people in between where they're like, yeah, it's, it's cool. Other people like me think things that it's, it's really cool technology is just like, it's so much not what Tesla is selling that it's a weird situation. But again, V12 is a significant improvement. So now that I've tried it, that I've experienced it, I understand more the motivation behind uh, offering a free month because a lot more, maybe not everyone, but a lot more people are going to be impressed with it. And obviously, Tesla now offering $99 a month subscription fee. Maybe they're going to get some some uh, keepers. They're going to want to keep it. Yeah, I mean, certainly it's it's not perfect, but for 99 bucks a month, like, why not? And you get everything. That's the thing. Like it's ninety nine bucks a month from the basic autopilot package. So that's it's it's more than just we're sending FSD. We're sending the package FSD. So let's me let me just read it out to you. So for that you get navigate on autopilot, which is in the enhanced autopilot package. Auto land change, auto park, summon, smart smart. Why they are still listing both them them separately? Summon. So you get all of that, which is six thousand dollar nominally, and then. You get all you, you get auto steer on city street traffic and, and light and stop sign control, which is like the city street driving uh, of FSD on top of that. It's not a bad deal, especially like if you're going on a road trip this month or something, pay the nine nine dollars and cancel the next one because you it's gonna make your road trip a lot better just with navigate autopilot, auto lane change. Uh, and I would even venture to say now on auto steer on city street. To me, I wouldn't even say yet that it's like better than uh, it's in, in enhanced my experience of driving just yet because there's still some issues with uh, uh, speed limits, for example. We don't have 40 kilometers hour speed limits here and it's still put them at 40 for no reason. Uh, so I, I always have to crank that up. It's, it gets annoying. Uh, yesterday I drove it on the highway and uh, I had an alert that the weather is bad so the FSD might be limited. I always had that before V12 and I could still get it to the the speed I'm comfortable with. This time if you have that alert it limits your speed and I was limited to 105 kilometers an hour which is a little bit too slow. It was raining outside but not, not raining bad like I, I would have wanted drive at least at 115 or something and it wouldn't let me so I, I had to get it off and and drive by myself so these things are a little bit annoying so it's not exactly better but i can see it getting there all right moving on question do you think tesla should change their mission statement the company is now a robotics and ai company uh, according to its ceo i don't think accelerating the transition to electric is accurate now I mean, it still does that, I and mean, it has done that. To be fair, so I don't know. Uh, it, they also they also change. I don't I don't think it's accelerating the transition to electric um, anymore. Yeah. I think they changed that. Uh, so now it's to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So that's the official mission now. Hmm. Yeah, still a little different than uh, Elon description. We talked about, yeah, but it's still it's still the core business. The core business is uh, energy storage and, and and electric vehicles. So yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm fine with it. All right, Tesla just reduced. We talked about that. Uh, yeah. When Tesla killed the R real wheel drive model initially to, to only build the all wheel drive, it was a cynical move to force a less efficient car on people for more money. No one questioned it back then, but it was a lame move. What are your thoughts? Yeah, there? I'm all for more more options. Uh, Especially when it comes to powertrain, yeah, like lower price as well. Yeah, I'm not big on option like uh, trims, like uh, not trims, but uh, like uh, 
like luxury like packages and all that and like bundling packages together like that that i'm not not a big fan but when it comes to the powertrain actually like very useful like difference making on the vehicle like give me the option i want maybe i just want a rear wheel drive maybe i just want the long the long range maybe i want both i don't know yeah all right um some i skipped ahead i think i can confirm 99 bucks a month yeah. uh, thank yeah, you elon tweeted yeah the subscription fee is in a lifetime guarantee at that rate yeah that's we talk about that they can and will raise it when they want to or more likely when they can uh the newest version seems to be ultra cautious in city traffic situations you know i had that problem on the initial one but i think the upgrade uh makes it a little less cautious um your thoughts there so I don't know. I, I need to to try it more. I want to do it this weekend. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a longer drive and try to film it. Um, yeah, like I said, the only time I had to do something is press the accelerator because it was being too cautious with another car at a four way uh, stop. But um, I've driven around like bike uh, like cyclists, pedestrian with dogs, like, uh, and I felt for the first time like it was building my confidence fast. A few version ago, I would I would disengage when I see a cyclist because I I just I I would feel so bad if if something happens. Um, but this time, I see that the car detects it. I see the car's already moving to the left. I see the car willing to go over the lane to uh, to get around there. I'm like, this this is the right way to do it, and it does feel more human like that. So, for better or worse. Yeah. All right. Uh... $99 is preempting the end of the free trial, and it's a good move, according to Paul T. Um, Andrew McDonald says, I think part of the reason Tesla is offering a one month free FSD for new cars and may also want to reduce monthly subscription is to get more data for their training of FSD. I don't know. They're, they're getting a lot of data. What are your thoughts? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Carl San Diego, let's talk about the half empty Cybertruck pack. I think we did. Yeah. I think it's a clear sign they intended to do two layers. I don't know. But the battery prices never came down as predicted, and the truck was going to cost too much. We talked a little bit about how it, there's only three, what three centimeters extra, so another layer doesn't really fit in there. No, no. Uh, Andrew, my 2019 Model Three just got a free month of FSD. Obviously, not a new car, so yeah, it wasn't for new cars only. Uh, Mr. Turkey next says the Cybertruck's range makes a Silverado look attractive. I mean, it, the Silverado's yeah. got a huge huge battery pack for better yeah. for worse i mean if you need to tow things cross country that's probably the vehicle for you uh to be clear years ago they said roadster would use a double thickness pack that's true yeah they did say that i wonder if that i wonder if that prototype had a double battery pack in it yeah i mean since then elon has been like very against higher than 400 mile range vehicles like he, yeah. he, he made a few statements about that and uh so even for trucks, like I, I get the statement for most vehicle, but for trucks, towing, you know, load capacity, it makes sense. All right. Uh, does Cybertruck have normal crumple zones like other cars and crashes? Uh, well, normal, like yeah, yes. Uh, like they don't look normal from the outside, but it has a front, front space, and the engine in the front is low, uh, so it gives more. Uh, more crumbles on before the cabin, the passenger cabin. Uh, so yeah, yeah. All right. What if they are planning at forty? So we talked about the bigger battery pack uh, that might be fit into the extra space there. Yeah, I don't know forty six one hundred and ten, but yeah, like you said, maybe a forty six ninety uh, five, something like that. Would, uh, would make yeah, sense. it sounds like that's another standard. Though mm -hmm. Tesla's so big, they can make their own mm -hmm. standards. Uh, Carl in San Diego in the front, the Cybertruck has a crumple zone. I haven't seen any signs. Other sections were designed for predicted deformation or energy absorption. Mm -hmm. uh, Elon confirmed. All right, we talked about that. Um, 420 M3 for four inch <laughs> rumor date. All right, we got eight. That days. makes sense. That that I would be shocked. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that would shock me is that it's far. It's like another week again. We're going to spend another week of like waiting for it. It's it's weird. Yeah, and it's Not just the announcement. Cool. I mean, clearly yeah. they're. They're being pumped out. A question. There are reports that used electric cars are booming in the U.S. Which brands have the highest rate of used EV sales? And in your opinion, which has the best quality? Wait, what uh, does that mean? The highest rate 
of used EV cell? Well, I I mean they're the, mo the more they are out there, the more they're gonna be EV right. cells. So it's Tesla in the, in North America. It's gonna be Tesla. Yeah, some Chevy Bolts and Mustang. Yeah. Models. No, uh, I mean, nice oh yeah, 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 a new haircut. So you got a new haircut. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> you got a fan in Thomas. But to go come back to Kwame's point. Yeah. We are starting to get a real used EV market now. Like it's, yeah. it's starting to feel like more of a real market. Before that, like the availability was so low a few years ago that uh, everyone would be was fighting over. Now we have a lot more inventory, and we have the US the use uh, four thousand dollars use discount for vehicles under twenty five thousand dollars. That's if you're a used car buyer. Like a lot, most people are, by the way, like I always try to emphasize that. Like, I think it's like 30% of the population of the car buying population that buys new cars, 70% yeah, yeah. buys used car. So if you're a used car buyer, now you can start looking at EVs and get some decent deals. All right. Though for uh, that $4,000 though, that uh, the, the eligibility criteria for income is lower, I think. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. It's pretty low. Actually, has to be from a dealer it can't just buy it on craigslist or whatever yeah that too but it, I, I thought it was pretty low too for for inflation like uh you know like if i think you know, maybe it was even like seventy five thousand dollars, which is not a bad salary but uh with inflation these days uh, in some markets you're like you, you're in poverty <laughs> literally all right let's move on uh big expansion going on in giga texas According to Richard Cool, yeah, yeah, they are adding on one side. I think the the the, the, the west side, uh, yeah, on the west side. I think they are adding a big uh, expansion to the main building. All right, uh, I've tried FSD a couple of times, and I don't know what the use case is in its current form. It's unpredictable, makes poor decisions, and even moderately complex situations, and pisses off other drivers. I would recommend trying the, the latest version. Uh, it's a little bit better. It's all. It's a. It's noticeably better. Yeah. However, if you have someone that follows you for a long time, like I, I had one earlier this week, a guy that followed me for like a few kilometers and in a place where there were like a lot of stops, uh, people will find you a bit weird for sure because they do a full stop. They don't do California stop or we call them American stops here. <laughs> like, you know, we, like, they do a nice full stop like, as if you're with your driving instructor in the car. <laughs> like, so. Really? Yeah, it's weird that you call that an American stop because we I don't <laughs> no 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 like we call we call an American stop someone that just like doesn't stop on like just slows oh, that, down yeah, and do that the, that's an sense. American stop so it doesn't do that now because of the NHTSA uh, update NHTSA what other what other do. Americanisms are there American <laughs> or you can't tell. Uh, I don't know that's the main one I don't are know you familiar with the Canadian tuxedo yeah yeah I I, <laughs> I, I do have a Canadian tuxedo sometimes. I catch myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, damn, I'm <laughs> wearing a good at the A lot of denim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin says the Tesla model lineup is looking dated. Well, I mean, obviously the Cybertruck is not dated, but um, it has been a while since uh, we've seen up updates in the Model 3. Or sorry. Yeah, the Model 3 just got an update, but it's not a significant uh, actually, it's pretty. Similar. I think it's pretty good. I, I, I think most people are like thinking Model Y because Model Y is so popular. Like yeah, Model Y everywhere. is everywhere. There's millions of them now. So like people are feel a bit weird about it that uh, it hasn't been updated. I hear a ton of rumor about a Model Y update, but Tesla was pretty clear that it's not going to be one this year. So I don't. I don't know. They can lie about that because uh, some people would have like would be pissed. Like I bought Model Y because you told me there was not going to be an update this year. I don't know. All right, uh, Greg Pullen, I've had FSD for five years, and I agree version 12 is the biggest change I've ever seen. Right, this FSD has been around for five years? I mean, you know, they called it whatever back then, but yeah. Uh, no, Marlon, well, yeah but I'm thinking more FSD better. But... Marlon, FSD has been a distraction and has the stupid robot, as has the stupid robot. Don't base your business model on the sci-fi speculation. Sell a righteous car that costs its owners less in the long run. A winner. All right, uh, old man shouting at the clouds. <laughs> I remember Alpha has a cheaper cars in Italy, like the Mit, Mit Two. So this is an Alpha for the people. Okay. Yeah, Carl says it's going to start at thirty thousand euros. Uh, I don't know. 
if yeah. that's official because that i mean scooter got the official release and everything and he didn't have pricing so oh, like thirty thousand uh, euros would make more sense all right wow so, fsd has wife approval which i've never gotten approval on fsd uh from the wife so and may never uh yeah it's my it's more of a of like a early adopter tech adopter that gets on board with that so if you're not that yeah most 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 of the time it's the, the husbands are like yeah look how cool it is and like the wife's yeah. just like holding on to the holders like what are you doing <laughs> right and, and we're trying not to gender stereotype here so. no it's just general speak yeah yeah all right uh greg poland another americanism is driving five to ten miles over the speed limit you guys don't do that we do that a lot like that and do. that's my one of my main problem with fsd is that it doesn't always allow me to do that yeah uh, especially you know about on the highway now again with with some rain or something all right uh we call that a california roll here in california uh, yeah so yeah there's that when i was living in the us the, so I, sometimes i call it that but here most people see an american stop when you don't stop fully at a, at a, at a stop um I don't, I don't i don't know what's gonna happen with that because it was an interesting point like tesla fought nitsa over over this they were like hey we have all the data no one stops like that so we if we cannot train our ai on that so they have to like bypass the ai and tell it to stop fully at the stop and not to do what the human does and it is kind of a bit frustrating. It's 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 weird. It's weird. I I would like to have actual data on how many people do a full stop at a stop, especially when there's no one around or something. Technically, you should. I'm not I'm not making any recommendation here. I'm saying follow the law because technically, if there's a cop there, they can stop you. And uh, depending on where you live, these these tickets are not cheap. Yeah. So all right. Thanks everyone for listening to the show this week. If you do enjoy the show, you can give us a thumbs up, a likes, a five-star rating on your podcast app. All those things are free to do and they help the show more than you think. We appreciate when you do it. Uh, we're going to see you same time, same place next week. Have a good one. Stay safe. Don't get a ticket.